too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, coffee can be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there too. This doctor in Italy found a lot of benefits, such as she says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone, and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? An ounce of prevention. Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. I want to get more exercise, and they require a medical exam. Before I can start, what kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying: an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. A job interview. Hello, Ms. Jones. Please come in and sit down. Thank you. So you're applying for the position of computer technician? Yes, that's right. My name is Mr. Smith, and I will be interviewing you today. Nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? As my resume shows, I graduated from Leeds University with a computer science degree. During my junior and senior years, I worked part time as a computer lab monitor in the university. As part of that job. I helped students with PC and desktop application problems, and did hardware and software maintenance. I also taught a weekly one-hour class on how to use Microsoft Office applications. How would you describe yourself? I really enjoy problem solving, and I'm hardworking. I'm also very organized, so when I have a lot of problems to deal with, I make a list and work through it from the most to the least urgent. That way, I can get everything done within the set deadlines. That's a good way to manage your time. Just one more question: Why do you want to work for us? Your company is well known and is respected in the computer industry. I would really like a chance to be part of your company. Okay, thank you for coming in. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Goodbye. A blind date. What's wrong, Mike? You appear to be depressed. I haven't slept in days, and I feel awful. My fiance and I broke up just before I went to Madrid for the concert. Why didn't you say something? No wonder your playing sounded so bad. Oh dear, I'm really sorry. It was an appalling performance. I agree. I was miserable and unhappy, but I had to perform anyway. Have you been seeing anyone else? Since you broke up with her, 
No, I have been working overtime instead. The conductor was not pleased with my last performance. Besides, don't you think it's too soon? Not at all. You might just need to get out and socialize. Hey, I've got a fabulous idea. Oh no, not another one of your ideas. What is it this time? Do you remember me telling you about Julia, a friend from work? I think so. Why? Well, she is single. I could set up the two of you. A blind date? I tried that when I was younger, and it was a disaster. Come on, Mike. I'd be helping two friends who will, of course, have a great time together. She has a charming personality, and she also plays the oboe. You can go to the concert in the park on Saturday afternoon. Maybe you can have coffee afterwards. She plays the oboe? Okay. Let me know when and where to meet her. The assignment. Hello, Wendy. Who did you do your homework about? I wrote about my dad because he is a firefighter. Really? Does he actually go into burning buildings? Yes, and he sometimes has to crawl into tight places to rescue people. Has he ever been trapped in a burning building? Well, one time he needed to break down a door. He was carrying a little girl out of her house. Someone left the stove on, and it ignited a fire in the kitchen. Was everyone all right? All five people living there escaped safely, but the house burned to the ground. Your dad is incredibly brave, a real hero. What does he do at the fire station? He resides there for a few days when he works. All of the firefighters cook, eat, and clean together. When there's a fire, they slide down a pole into the fire station's garage to get their firefighting equipment. They quickly put on their gear and then jump onto the fire trucks. My dad loves to drive the fire trucks. Wow! Maybe I should be a firefighter someday. I'm definitely going to be a firefighter, Ian. I want to be just like my dad. The project. Hey, Dad. Do you think you can help me out? I've just been assigned this enormous project at school, and I really don't know where to begin. Sure, Jason. I'll give it my best shot. Oh, Dad. I know you'll be a great help and inspiration to me. Okay, okay. That's enough flattery from you for one day. What's this project about? Well, I have two choices. I can research your profession. Or I can interview someone that I admire about their profession. If I do the second option, I must also add my own opinion about their profession. Well, I am an expert when it comes to my profession. Accounting is a noble profession and one that I am always happy to talk about. Dad, I know how much you love your career. It isn't that I don't admire you, but what I was hoping actually was that you could speak to Mr. Chang, your diving friend. And see if he would agree to an interview. Diving for a living sounds cool. I see. That's a great idea. You know how I really dislike talking about myself for too long. Let me give David Chang a call right now and find out. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. I know this will be an awesome project. The course schedule. It's so difficult to choose what courses to take this semester. Henry, have you chosen all of your courses yet? No, Sue. I'm having a hard time making up my mind, and I still need to select two more. Do you have any ideas? Do you know anything about the professors? I heard that the psychology professor is tough but fair. If you work hard, you can get a good grade. Psychology sounds interesting. How about we both sign up for psychology? Then we'd be in the same class, and we could help each other with assignments. I remember the last class we took together. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Oh come on! It would be fun. I promise I'll attend the classes and not just borrow your notes this time. Thanks. I was thinking about taking film studies. Why don't you take that? I like going to the movies, but I don't want to study them. I know someone who took that course last year, and she said it's very easy. 
Almost everyone gets an A or a B, and there is no homework. That is tempting, but I want to learn something useful. Fine, but don't complain to me if you get a C. The importance of writing. This is terrible. I hate this assignment. What's wrong, Timmy? I'm frustrated because I need to write a book report and I can't get started. May I see your paper? There's nothing here. I can't think of anything to write, and it's due tomorrow. To make matters worse, we have to perform an oral presentation in front of the entire class. I don't see the purpose of writing a book report anyway. Writing is a necessary skill that you'll use for the rest of your life. This book report is just one way to begin learning that skill. It's another form of communication and a means of expressing your thoughts. It allows others to understand what is in your heart and mind. I've never had to write before. Why should I start now? Now is the best time to begin. The best writers read a lot and practice writing. Anyone can learn to write well. I know you can do it. Okay, Mom. When you put it that way, I think I can do it. That's the right attitude. Let's try to organize some of your thoughts by brainstorming. What can you tell me about the book? The book? I've only watched the movie. Does that count? Oh goodness! What kind of child am I raising? One that probably won't be a famous writer. Defense. Stay low and bend your knees. Come over here. Yes, coach. Jackson, when you're playing defense, keep your knees bent and your body low. It helps you keep your balance, and it allows you to move more quickly in every direction. Like this? That's right. You should attempt to stay on the balls of your feet. It's like you are getting ready to pounce. Athletes never rest on their heels. Should I stand with my legs close together or far apart? It is best to keep them about shoulder width apart. Bend your knees and keep your back straight. Spread your arms straight out at your sides. This seems almost like I'm getting ready to attack the ball. It is a little bit like that. Your stance looks much better than before. Coach, how do I move forward and backward on defense? I feel like my stance is fine, but when I try to dart toward my opponent, I keep tripping over my feet. When you move forward, put your right foot in front of you, with your toes pointing in the direction you want to go. When you move backward, just reverse it. Follow the direction of your left foot. How are you feeling? My legs are tired and my back aches. Playing defense is hard work. Take a break, then we'll try it again. At the movies, ticket prices have certainly gone up. Yes, but I really needed a break. So if the price is a bit higher, it doesn't matter. Besides. I really want to see this movie on the big screen. Would you like something to snack on while we watch the movie? Sure. What do they have? It looks like the standard popcorn and soda, but there's also ice cream, hot dogs, and coffee. I have a craving for chocolate, but I should attempt to eat something healthy. I want to avoid getting sick this year. I'm trying to change my diet. I'm afraid the healthiest item may be the coffee. Do they have any muffins? No, but they do have brownies. I haven't had a brownie in a long time. Please get me a brownie and a coffee. What are you getting? I'm getting the large popcorn and a cola. Here is some money. It's on me. No, please. The tickets were extremely expensive. I know you are on a restricted budget. I insist. Did you want cream and sugar in your coffee? Well, thank you very much. No cream in the coffee, please. So you probably don't want sugar either. No, I think there is enough sugar in the brownies. I'll find us some seats near the aisle. Fresh lemonade. How can I earn some extra money this summer? Why don't we start a lemonade stand, Will? That's a great idea, Mary. But do you think we will make any money? If we set up in an area with a lot of traffic on a hot day, we will get plenty of customers. We can charge one dollar and fifty cents per cup. 
That sounds a little expensive. But we need to charge that much to cover our expenses. By charging one dollar and fifty cents per cup, we can make good money with our lemonade stand. Okay, what do we need to get started? We need the ingredients to make lemonade. So we need lemons, sugar, and water. We need something to keep our money in, a sign to advertise the lemonade, paper cups, and a cardboard box to use as a stand. Should we sell food to go with the lemonade? I think that would be too complicated. We would need a permit and either a cooler or stove. We should stick to just selling lemonade. You're right. Let's just keep it simple. Okay. Let's get set up and think of a plan to get some customers and make some sales. Why don't I attract the customers and you serve the lemonade? Sounds good to me. The amusement park. I love this amusement park, Fran. Thanks for suggesting it. I am having a fantastic time. There's that new ride. It's called the volcano, and it's supposed to be amazing. That looks awfully high. Do you really want to try it? We've experienced the rocket, the giant Ferris wheel, and those bumper boats. Don't you think that's enough? Besides, I'm absolutely starving. If you come on the volcano with me. I'll buy you a pizza with whatever toppings you want. Do you really mean any topping, even mushrooms, which you don't like? Yes, I will even order a pizza with mushrooms. Okay, Michael. I will try this last ride. Great, Fran. I know you will enjoy this. Did you know that when the volcano erupts, our seats shake? I heard it is quite an experience. I am not sure that I want to get on this ride any more. Don't worry, Fran. Look at the people getting off the ride. They look very satisfied. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can do this, even for pizza. How would you feel if I bought lunch instead? I don't want to force you to do something you really don't want to do, and I am hungry. Sure, let's get some lunch. I want to try this new restaurant called Skylight. The top of the restaurant spins while you eat. Oh wow! Let's go. The list. Thanks for coming, Dad. I can't believe my first day of school is just next week. Your mother and I are proud of you. Greer is a very prestigious art school. There is an enormous list of art supplies. They are mostly items I don't recognize. Let's look for the supplies that you recognize, Megan, and then we can get help with the rest. I need a large drawing board. I also need a drawing pad one meter by half a meter in size, newsprint paper, and a set of artist's drawing pencils. Here is the drawing board, and I noticed the pencils over there. What's next? I need watercolor paint, various brushes, India ink, and a fountain pen. They are on the wall display. Now we need to locate the vine charcoal. Excuse me, miss. Yes, sir. How can I help you? We're trying to find vine charcoal. Do you know what that is and where we can find it? Vine charcoal is specially burned wood. Burning it makes it like a black chalk. It is commonly used for drawing. Vine charcoal is very easy to erase, so we keep it next to the erasers. That's everything, Dad. Great. Let's pay for all these supplies. Talking drums. I want to be a member of a heavy metal band. I love heavy metal drums, James. I don't, Henry. They are too heavy, if you ask me. I prefer a more traditional style, like African barrel drums. Barrel drums? What are those? They are made with hollow logs and animal skins. First, they cut down a tree. They cut a section that's about as thick and tall as a barrel. They stretch an animal skin over the top and tie it to the sides with wooden pegs. These pegs can be tightened to change the pitch. Hmm, that sounds interesting. In Nigeria, they have talking drums. They use a hollow tree trunk that's smaller than a barrel drum and leave an opening at both ends. Then they fit an animal skin on each end. 
There's a string between each of these ends. When a player holds the drum under an armpit and squeezes, it tightens the string and raises the pitch. Why do they call it a talking drum? The drummers are so skillful; they can make the drums imitate human voices. They seem to cry, laugh, and shout. I'd like to hear that. Why don't you come to the community college with me tomorrow? A troupe from Africa is giving a concert, and they are supposed to have the best drummers in the world. Now that sounds great. Online chatting. Philip, are you still chatting online? It's nine thirty p.m. You have an exam tomorrow. Yes, Mom. I'll get off in a minute. I read some articles about chatting online. I'm not so sure you should be spending so much time in front of your computer. Mom, that seems unfair. It can be very educational. You meet people from all over the world who talk about lots of different things. Okay, maybe these people share their knowledge. I still think it is better to join clubs and socialize with real people. Do you think chatting online causes bad behavior? Online chatting can be very addictive, not to mention expensive. Well, if you have DSL, chatting is not expensive. Also, not everyone who chats is an addict. Disabled people are better able to socialize online. You know, not every area is wheelchair accessible. True. However, I've read that there are lots of strange people online who are dangerous. I'll be careful. Besides, you can always see what I'm writing. And who I'm writing to? In my opinion, the biggest fault with chatting online is the lag time or delay in the system. I agree. I have noticed that there is some lag time in you getting off the computer. A new calculator. Hi, I'd like to see your calculators. Did you have a certain model in mind, ma'am? I'm not thinking of any specific model. I want something simple for basic math. Is it for personal use? Yes, I just need it for shopping and keeping track of my bills. Well, the great thing is that these simple calculators are very inexpensive and small. Here is a solar model that never needs batteries. It is thin too. It's too small. I can't read the numbers very easily. How about this one? It is a pocket calculator. It's a bit bigger. The display is easier to read. Yes. I can see the numbers better. It is easier to hold too. Is it also solar? Yes, it is. It is battery powered as well. It has an eight-digit display. This calculator also has a memory key. How much is it? It is only five dollars plus tax. It comes with a one-year warranty. I'll take it. Research. What are you doing, Billy? I'm doing research. I found a lot of great websites. You know, I think you might want to go to the library and look at some books. I don't want to. It takes too much time, and besides, this is fast, easy, and fun. This paper will be done in no time. The internet is great for finding information, but it is also full of misinformation and lies. You don't really know what you are looking at unless you are at a reliable site. It's safer to get some books first and then search for more information. Grandma, I love you, but I think you're a little old-fashioned. Look at all this great information. My report is on Albert Einstein. Now, according to the site, he was born in 1979, came up with the theory of relativity, and was awarded the Nobel Prize for physics in 1922. Your information is wrong. Albert Einstein was born in 1879 and developed the theory of general relativity. He won the Nobel Prize in 1921. Wow, that means all this stuff is inaccurate. How did you know all that? Come with me to the library, and I'll help you find the books with those facts. Thank you, Grandma. You're a real lifesaver. Ants, ants everywhere. Hello, Mrs. Wilson. How are you? I'm worried, Brianna. Thousands of ants are all over my patio. That's quite a problem. What's worse is that my daughter's birthday party is in a few days, and I wanted to have it on the patio. Why don't you call an exterminator? 
I would, but I don't want all those hazardous chemicals around my children. It's harmful and unhealthy. I also don't want dangerous substances to seep into the garden. I usually don't have problems with ants, and I don't use any chemicals. What's your secret? Well, ants are difficult to control, so I planted a lot of mint plants near my deck. I also use cinnamon and cayenne pepper. I just sprinkle them around the places I don't want ants. Some people have tried it and said it worked. Others said that they needed to try something else. I think it's worth a try. I would rather use cinnamon and mint around my patio than some hazardous chemicals. Besides, I don't mind having the ants in the yard. I simply don't want them coming to the birthday party. Would you mind helping me? It would be a pleasure. I have a lot of cinnamon at home, and I can run to the store to get the plants for you. Thank you, Brianna. You're such a thoughtful person. A big responsibility. Mom, can I get a puppy? No, Billy. Taking care of a pet is a big responsibility. I promise to take good care of him, and you won't have to remind me to do things for him. A dog isn't a toy that you play with for a while. He will be part of our life for the next ten or twenty years. He is a living creature. I understand that, Mom. I promise to feed him every morning and take him for walks every afternoon. That's part of the responsibility, but there's more. He needs a license and has to go to the vet to get shots. A dog also needs companionship. You can't go off with your friends and leave him locked up in the house all day. I understand, Mom. I have almost a hundred dollars in the bank, so I can pay for his license and shots now. There are other expenses too. Dog food is rather expensive. Well, I have my job mowing lawns, and I'll get a newspaper route. I think we should discuss this with your father when he gets home. This is a family decision. Okay, Mom. Thanks. The exchange rate. Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the bolivar. The exchange rate is two hundred bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate, but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange one hundred dollars? I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash, and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful! I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela.